G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so very, very good to see you. Well, today I think we've got some of the biggest news from Nikon ever. This is not clickbait. Considering the environment that we're in today, the competitive nature of the photographic industry, this is really, really super important news from Nikon. So let's just jump straight into it. What has been announced today, a, a, an official press release from Nikon, is that they are developing their own sensors. Now, the one that they're talking about today is a 17 odd megapixel sensor. It can do 4K, it's square, it's a stacked BSI sensor. Uh, and the two craziest parts about this sensor is it has a 1000 frames per second readout speed and it has ridiculously high dynamic range. Now, this is formally announced. This is out in the open. Uh, Nikon have already told us a great deal about this sensor, which I will dive into. But the headline is, what does this mean for so many different things? Let's talk about it. So here we are on the Nikon Japan site, and this is being translated by Google. We can see here that February 17th developed stacked CMOS image sensor. Here we are, it is being translated for us. Now the sensor is square, there it is right there, square. Nikon Corporation president is announcing a stacked CMOS sensor with a total pixel count of approximately 17.84 million pixels that realizes high resolution imaging with a thousand frames per second HDR characteristics of 110 dB and the sensor is square at 4 by 4K. They have developed this image sensor. Uh, this was announced at the ISSCC, the International Solid State Circuits Conference held in San Francisco on the 15th. Now, Nikon have released exactly how the, um, the chip is built and stacked and where all the different readouts and processes and processing and all the different logic and the control circuits and all that sort of stuff, it's all here. As an optical equipment manufacturer, Nikon is also engaged in research and development of cutting edge image sensors, which are the core of video technology based on optical technology, precision measurement, processing technology and material technology. Currently, image sensors are used not only in, in the video field, such as digital cameras and smartphones, but also in various industrial fields, such as as automobiles. Self-driving, this is going to become ridiculously large and there is a fleet of cars around the world measuring in the hundreds of millions. That's going to be a lot of sensors for people to sell. This is a highly lucrative and a highly sought after market. In all fields, there is a demand for image sensors that achieve all of compactness, lightweight, high frame rate, wide dynamic range, and high resolution. The technological development of image sensors is indispensable for Nikon, which leads the video industry. And we will continue to research and develop sensors in response to market demands. Automobile sensors is going to be massive moving forward in the future. Each car might have five to 10 sensors, times that by hundreds of millions of cars, and you are talking billions of sensors required. And of course, this just keeps going, let alone cameras. Cameras is a drop in the ocean compared to this. And all sorts of devices have sensors in them. Of course, our phones, my, my current phone, it has four or five camera sensors in it. It's ridiculous. It is a massive market. Again, measuring in the hundreds of millions required per year. Now let's talk about the features. This again is Nikon's own press release. This is not rumored, this is real. And here we're talking about the fact that this chip has the industry's highest level of high dynamic range characteristics of 110 dB, as well as the ridiculous high speed shooting of 1000 frames per second. That's crazy. 
And here they're saying if you want to slow it down a little bit, it also has a even wider dynamic range if you want to go down to 60 frames per second. Here we're talking about the fact that exposure can be controlled for each area on the screen. The top ship has a 16 by 16 pixels as one block. So basically, this is like the dimming on your TV screen where the LED panel can be dimmed in, in different regions. And so Nikon are doing the same thing. With this function, you can express a wide dynamic range and even for subjects with a large difference in brightness, you can clearly shoot the entire scene without crushing the dark areas or overexposing the bright areas. This is a super smart idea. And then here's some examples of photos. This is what they would look like without this technology, just black or exposed for here, and this is just overexposed, and this is what their sensor can achieve. Very, very interesting. So finally, those main specs, this is the manufacturing process is a 65 nanometer BSI CMOS stacking process. Currently, this test chip or this release chip is a one inch sensor. Obviously, they could make it in any size they like. Uh, the pixel size is 2.7, um, very small, up to 1000 frames per second. And the dynamic range, as we can see, is 110 dB or 134 dB, even higher dynamic range. And I, I'm guessing that would be um, to do with how quickly that dimming technology can work. And if it's got a bit more time to move around, then you can get more dynamic range. Now, one of the other most exciting things about this chip, uh, which we talked about, which is the high dynamic range, the way they're doing this is by having a layer on the chip, which they can dim a little bit like how your television sets uh, work, where you have the localized dimming of the background LED panels. Nikon are doing the same thing with this chip. It's sort of like having a, 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 a filter, uh, an ND filter over part of the sensor, and it's done on a really fine grain, high res level. This is a ridiculously smart solution to creating dynamic range by literally having this movable ND filter that's tiny. It's, it's, it's an absolutely brilliant idea. So there's a lot of technology here. We're talking high dynamic range. We're talking very small pixel pitch, and we are talking extremely, extraordinarily fast readout speeds. That's all awesome. It comes down to your use case, what you want and need. As we've talked about in very recent previous videos, some people want high frame rates. I don't think any photographer wants a thousand frames per second, not very often anyway. And then, of course, this creates immense dynamic range, which is something that I'm super interested in. So this chip has something for everybody. It also has the very small pixel pitch, which means in the 35 mil sized center, I think someone's calculated you'd get up towards 80 to 100 pixels in a 35 mil sensor, which is crazy. So this, sens this sensor, this technology, let, and let's just go up a couple of levels. What Nikon are showing us here today is the technology, what it is that they can achieve. Now they could choose to use any one of those three different pillars of this technology to put in a camera. They might put in one camera, ridiculously high frame rates. They might put in another camera, ridiculously high dynamic range. And they might put in the third camera, ridiculously high megapixel counts. Of course, they can put it all in one camera and that would be the crazy expensive flagship camera. But if you pick and choose one of those three pillars, then it can be a little less expensive and then everybody else can buy it. What we're seeing here is one, Nikon are designing and creating their own sensors. So all the conversations about Nikon being beholden to Sony, they move off the table as this technology matures. I'm sure that's gonna take a little bit, a little while, but here it is. Here it is in black and white from Nikon. They have an absolutely immense size market in the car industry and the mobile phone industry. Just those two industries alone, we are talking billions of sensors need to be made over the next few years. This is massive.
So not only is this fantastic from a business perspective for Nikon, if anybody was worried about Nikon's future, the fact that they're punching into this market and have created something very exciting and they're doing it themselves, this is big news from the business side of Nikon. And from the photographers and the photography side of Nikon, well, this technology that we are seeing showcased here today absolutely is going to ripple into Nikon cameras. And as I've already outlined, it can be used in so many different ways. No, this really is big. And uh, in a way it feels even bigger than the Z mount itself, which to me, Two and a half years ago, that's what I said on this very channel, that the Z mount was the biggest deal of the Z camera releases. And I think that is being borne out by the optical performance that we are seeing. Now, this is the second part of that story. We've got the sensors to now exploit that mount and those optics. This is all coming soon. And it's really interesting timing. Let's just quickly talk about the timing. Nikon has made this announcement what is it, about two weeks after the A1 has come out, and they've made it about one week before they're going to have a press conference. It's hard to see this timing being anything other than extraordinarily strategic, and perhaps, I don't know, but perhaps, and based on what Tom Hogan spoke about back in January, perhaps we've got some very, very, very exciting things coming in 2021. This is huge. No, it's absolutely huge and it's real. It's not rumored. I'm going to say it for the third time. It's exciting because Nikon has been the underdog in this story for a number of years now and well, it's just lovely to see them get their baseball bat and potentially, it's early days, but potentially hitting a couple of home runs here. I really look forward to seeing how this seemingly ridiculous technology with its crazy high dynamic range, that's what I'm excited about the most of those three uh, tent pole features. Let's repeat it, class leading dynamic range, a thousand frames per second, and uh, very high megapixels with that pixel pitch. I would genuinely love to know your thoughts on your analysis on what this all means. What do you think is going to happen next week <laughs> now that we've learned this? Um, I don't know. I just really love everybody's thoughts. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask the questions. You guys just go for it. All right. Really good to see you today. Really good to see you today. I do hope you're well. If this is your first time here, I'd love to see you again, so please do subscribe. Please share this video more than any other video I've ever made. Let's get it out there to the world to, to, so the world knows Nikon is still very much in the game. That's what they are. This is, this is astonishing. And from just, just, just from a business case perspective, this is amazing. Please like, I think there's a lot to like here. It doesn't matter who you are and uh, what religion of photography you are. This is always, new technology is always good for all of us. So this is great news. All right, I'll see you very soon. It's exciting. <laughs>